okay so hello everyone in this video i am going to do some kind of simulation of a pv cell and in the previous lecture actually we had uh, seen modeling of uh, the pv cell so let me just briefly review what we had done in the previous lecture and then we'll 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 go ahead with this lecture so what i have mentioned in the previous lecture is uh, working principle and pv cell characteristics that means if you go experimentally take a pv cell and whose area is 100 cm square so based on silicon and then sun is shining uh, at 100 watts per meter square under that such experimental conditions i just measure voltage and current with a variable resistor and when the resistance is infinity i am this is a case of open circuit and the current is zero because obviously the resistance is infinity open circuit i get the open circuit voltage of 0.6 whereas power will be zero because current is zero another case short circuit again the resistance will be zero short circuited so the voltage is zero and this time the measured current comes out to be a three amperes current which is proportional to the solar isolation again in this case also power is zero in fact if you plot it you see the power is zero at open circuit and power is zero at the short circuit again so for these two cases the power is zero so in fact i can call this as a short circuit i'm sorry this is open circuit part and this is short circuit so for both these cases the power is zero and here it is p max maximum power is achieved somewhere in between for a particular uh, value of voltage uh, for example 0.5 and for example 2.8 i'm achieving the maximum power so now if i go down what is the effect of solar isolation so as the solar isolation is increasing so for 1000 the short circuit current was 3 amperes for 1200 proportionally the short circuit current increases for 800 watts per meter square proportionally the short circuit current decreases and so on whereas there is not much variation in the open circuit voltage there might be very slight variation but it's not significant now there is also another effect of uh, series connection of cells as and when I add cells in series, the voltages add up as you know. So the open circuit voltage here was 0.6. So then it becomes 1.2 and 1.8 and so on. Whereas the current remains same. So whereas if I, if I add PV cells in parallel, then the currents add up and then I get more and more current like this. So these are some of the uh, experimental behavior or characteristics of the PV cell then to model this what is the argument we made that is uh, i think i should go to page five so the model that matches to this particular experimental uh, setup is a current source parallel with diode like this so why it matches is when the voltage is very very low the diode current is low and is this doesn't matter so the current is almost straight so this part is taken care of and when the voltage starts increasing rapidly there's a current increase current flow into this diode and therefore that deprives the output current and suddenly the output current falls and so on so that is how we justify that this model is the uh, is the best model for pv cell uh, of course this is the ideal model uh, current in parallel with diode and practical model will also have a series resistance and uh, shunt resistance to represent the losses in the thing so but then right now we want to understand the concept so we are doing this and what is our mathematical model i am just connecting a variable voltage here vd value i can vary from zero to some value and for each value of vd i find what is my i and i will be nothing but simple kirchhoff's current law photo current minus diode current so this photo current is flowing like this diode current is flowing like this so photo current minus diode current is the output current and how do i get the photo current so photo current is is just a simple uh, proportional thing so for i was getting three amperes for thousand watts so if thousand watts per meter square so if the isolation increases or decreases uh, i can accordingly proportionally the iph will change the photo current and also depending on the number of parallel paths it changes this is the expression for IPH and this is the expression for diode. So this is again the short key model for diode. 
basically diode current is exponentially increasing and vd is the voltage of the diode and uh, is is the saturation current which is known and vt is known and all these values are known so because these values are known i can find whatever id value for different vd value and finally i can do that now if i want to consider series connection then i can also do this so enough of uh, review let's let's jump into uh, my octave environment or matlab environment and we'll do that so here uh, i'll start the code so clear all and i'm sorry i think i'm just clear all and clc so one will clear the variables and other will clear the this thing clear the screen okay now where do we start so if we go back in the model uh, there is a input data so let's give the input data so the input data is isolation so let's assume that isolation is tau that is solar isolation and then let's assume that number of uh, parallel paths is one and number of series is also one so basically i am just simulating a single uh, cell now i also know some constants so the constants are uh, the saturation current is for the diode that is 10 e minus 12 amperes this is diode saturation current and i also know vt this is 26 millivolts this is uh, diode thermal voltage what else so n is the ideal t factor so 1.4 That's it. I think these are the input parameters, whatever I have to define. So now let's do the calculations. So first step I, I would like to calculate is my, what is my photo current IPH. So already you see here I have this equation. So three divided by thousand multiplied by isolation multiplied by number of parallel paths. So let me just run up to here. So I am getting 3 amperes current. So that is correct. So if the isolation was only 800, then I am getting 2.4 amperes. So, so far the code is working properly. Next I will simulate this equation, diode equation. So just as it is I will enter here. So ID equal to so I capital D equal to I S saturation current into exponent of all right V D voltage of diode is not yet defined. So let me um, define voltage of diode is 0 0.1 volts. Just assume V D. So I'm just assuming V D uh, now n and vt so there is ideal t factor n and then multiplied by vt already i have mentioned it before and the number of uh, series so which is one right now and this this whole exponent minus one is my id so let me let me run it and see so i think i should use capital v here all right so i'm getting 1.46 into e to the power of minus 10. so it's a very very low current so id is practically zero so therefore it's working as per uh, this one so what is my total output current output current will be nothing but kirchhoff's current law 
so photo current minus diode current so i'll get the output current and then what is my power so power is nothing but uh, vd into id so i am able to generate 1.4 into e to the power of minus 11 watts so i think 0.1 volt is not the best voltage that needs to be there so let's take it 0.3 volts and then see what is happening all right the id is slightly increasing r is still 3 and then power is slightly increasing so 0.4 all right 0.5 Oh, I'm sorry. This is not ID. This is just I. So the output power is actually V into I. So let's go back with 0.1. So 0.3 watts of power I'm getting. 0 0.2. 0 0.6 watts of power I'm getting. So can I get more power? So I'll increase the voltage 0.3 and then again run. I'm getting 0.9 watts. Very good. So 0.4. Can I get more power? 1.2 watts. That's also good. 0 0.5 1.5 watts that's even better so maybe 0 0.55 1 1.65 even better 0.58 so 1.74 is also better I think 0 0.6 let's try good 1.8 and 0.7 all right it's increasing this is not expected 0.8 so somewhere it should actually decrease let me do one thing let me just check the code and then uh, come back i'll just pause for a while all right, I just checked it. There is nothing uh, serious in the code. Everything is correct, except that the saturation current is actually 10 micro amperes. So let me just update it here. So in order to match the results, this, this is supposed to be 10 to the power of minus 6 or 10 to the power of minus 12, as theoretically it is uh, mentioned. Uh, if I use 10 to the power of minus 6, and then now you see, so I am getting a when the voltage of diode is 0.1 i am getting 0.3 watts of power so can i increase this from 0.3 watts so if i use 0.2 voltage then again if i run it i am getting 0.6 so the power is increasing so if i further increase the diode voltage 0.89 again increasing so 0.4 so again 1.08 so even increasing so therefore even even if an again increase 0 0.5 all right so now the power becomes uh, negative so the way we model this uh, expression so if iph is less than id then the i will become negative so that that's again not allowed so but then anyway it's just a basic simulation now instead of just looking at the numbers what i'll do i would like to plot so i'm making the numbers like this so i'll start from zero and then i take a step of 0.1 and then i'll go all the way up to 0 0.5 volts so now vd is a vector so when vd is a vector let me just show you how it looks like So VD is a vector like this. So it has 50, 51 elements and last element is 0.5 like this. So for all these 50 values, the, uh, the rest of the equation is calculated. So VD is a vector. So of course, okay, here there's just one correction I need to make. NS will be in the denominator and id will also become a vector so this is also fine i will be a vector so here i have to just give dot star that's it so i get the power as a vector so i'll just simply plot 
plot uh, p let's see how it works good so i'm getting the power curve which is uh, more or less matching with what uh, i expected so i have to just adjust the x axis and y axis let me just take a pause i'll uh, here this is just the count of the data is given i want to use i want to refer to the proper formula to get the voltage vd on x axis so just let's pause for a while all right so what i have done is just added this line number 18 19 20 21 22 up to 23 this is just the plotting so if you look, just look at the code so i have the different sections of the code one is the input data here is the input data from line number 4 to line number 9 i am giving all the input data then if i go up then i am doing all the calculations nothing very complicated just calculating the photo current calculating the diode current subtracting them calculating the power uh, and then if I go down this just plotting so what I'm doing in plotting is uh, I'm plotting it subplot I'm plotting first VD against I and similarly I'm plotting VD against P so let's see how it comes so here is the output so as expected 3 amperes current is remaining constant up to here so as as my diode voltage keeps on increasing or the output voltage keeps on increasing and after a while, uh, just before 0.5, it reaches to 0. Similarly, the power curve also, power, we know it under, uh, this one is open circuit conditions or short circuit condition, the power is 0 and open circuit condition also the power is 0. Only small change that we had expecting, this instead of 0.5, we expected this to go up to 0.6. So let me see by manipulating the constants we can do something. So what if IDLT factor I make it 1.6. So there is a plot. Yeah, I think it's working. All right, the VD value I'm I'm keeping calculating only up to 1.5. Now I'll calculate up to 1.6, and then uh, let's see what happens now. So okay, so I can increase this. So all right, yeah. So now it's more or less matching. So I, what I have done is I just manipulated the IDLT factor to 1.8, and I am able to get this. So for a single cell, single series, and single parallel cell, three amperes is a short circuit current, and then up uh, open circuit voltage is almost close to 0.6 volts. Maximum power I can extract is somewhere up to here, so between 1 and 1.5. In fact, I can just uh, print that also so this max of p so let's see so 1.3 watts i can extract maximum power so so here i was using 1.8 in my simulation so now let's let's try to get the other uh, other plots that we had that is what happens for different isolation levels so isolation level instead of uh, i'll go to input data instead of 1000 i'll give 1200 so more isolation so let me run it so i'm getting maximum power is 1.59 and uh, where is the output and here you can see it is 3.6 amperes so and maximum power is almost exceeding 1.5 so isolation is working 
So if I reduce the isolation due to some reason there is a cloud passing on top of the solar panel and isolation is reduced to only 600. Now if I plot, so maximum power is 7.42 you can see and the plot is also reducing like this. Alright, so let's say I am adding 2 in series. So in that case, now if I if I run, uh, because I am I'm assuming VD value only up to 0.6, it is coming like this. So here what I can do is I can just multiply this with uh, NS so that as and when I change NS, my range of VD also changes. I think maybe I'll just increase that. All right, now let's let's do this. Yeah, so now you notice uh, the voltage VD is exceeding, so it's coming up to 1. Point, you know, 1.15 volts. So because I added two in series, I am able to get more voltage. So if I have a string of five, then I can extract 3.7 watts and and I can go up to this and of course the power range also I have to increase. Here let's put So here almost up to 4 watts I am touching. Let's check if NP is working. So number of parallel paths. So if I have 3 parallel paths and only 1 series path and my isolation also is 1000. So now if I run, so I am able to get 4.33. So remember 1.3 was the maximum power I could extract from one cell and now if I have 3 in parallel so I can get almost up to 3.9 but here in fact I can get a little bit more uh, because of the model. Okay so let's let's look at the plot also. Oh it's all going out of range. Why it is going out of range? Because uh, here I am plotting up to 4 amperes only. So let's say 3.1 into or 3 into NP. I am just increasing the visibility. So let's look at this. Yeah, Now I can see it, it's coming properly. 9 amperes is coming as a current. So this is how we can do the modeling. So let me just go back to my normal case. So this is my normal case. I am able to get the uh, PV cell model. Now you can see the power is increasing and then again decreasing. So there is a certain value where the maximum power can be extracted. So even that uh, I can see. So here maximum power is 1.3 so from that I can actually find out for which value of VD the maximum power is extracting and if I am able to maintain that uh, power we are able to get it. So so what we have done so far is uh, so coded the above model in MATLAB or in Octave and matched the experimental experimental PV curve to the model to the simulation model. So I encourage you all to try this. Uh, if you have uh, if you, you just do the simple code as I have done in this uh, this thing in this video and then try to get the 
this particular characteristics on your uh, on your own thank you